one man with one microphone who likes to run to rock music. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. In today's episode, I wanted to go through a kind of a U-turn, I guess, because uh, I know I've done episodes that kind of go against this. So I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate for myself and uh, give you some contradictory advice. Uh, so here we go. In a previous episode, I think one of the earliest ones actually, I talked about not needing to buy new stuff. It wasn't really uh, saying to you, don't buy it. It was more just question why you are buying it. And in today's episode, I wanted to open a question to you. And that question is, why do you buy new sample libraries? Why do you buy new plugins? Why is it a good idea to buy these things? So, if I'm going to answer that question out loud so that you guys can kind of get uh, a little bit of my opinion on it. So, why do I buy new sample libraries? It's kind of twofold, really. And I want to focus on one of those answers in today's episode more than the other. The first one being... I buy a sample library for a specific function. So that function could be anything from needing an ethnic sounding voice over the top of one of my cues. Could be needing a specific sound, like a gritty cello or or just it's not as specific, but like, uh, oh, I need an ambient pad, but I'm not sure what I need, to, where I can get it. And then you buy, you go looking for an ambient pad library. And that's the, that's the one I'm going to spend less time on. That's the specific one. And that's what that last episode was about. That was about getting you to understand that buying them for a specific purpose is a very useful thing. But just buying them because you didn't feel like the ones you had weren't good enough or that you felt you know, oh, I've got to buy them, they're on sale. You question that. However, today, I want to talk about the other reason I might buy a library. And that is for inspiration. And this is this goes out to not just libraries, but also effects. I, you know, I trained myself, uh, trained myself, sound like a dog. I, I, I learnt the guitar when I was a teenager, uh, you know, like most teenage boys, hoping it would uh, enable me to get some chicks. Uh, you know, didn't work because, uh, you know, ladies aren't impressed by, you know, modes and scales, are they? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, well, some might, I don't know. Anyway, beside the point, I learnt the guitar and... I had this, my brother's old kind of rubbishy Squire guitar, which at the time made me feel like a rock star. It was awesome. Uh, and I learned all these, all these things, and then you can, I played with my guitar, played with my amp, and I was like, this is great, this is great, it was great. And after a while, I kind of, my excitement for it stagnated because I was doing the same things on my guitar, because, you know, you tend to fall into muscle memory, don't you? Same shapes, same patterns. And I was doing the same things with my amp. So I was starting to hear the same thing over and over again, and I was feeling a bit, uh, you know, a bit groundhog day uh, when it came to my guitar playing. I'd sit down, play the same chords, same distortion. Okay, great, I get it. Yeah. And I was feeling out of inspiration. And then I was in- introduced to guitar pedals Uh, you know and uh, uh, you know as I'm sure most of you know guitar pedals are so much fun and what they did were you know I plugged it in I think it was a flanger uh, plugged in this flanger uh, boss flanger of course and I played the same patterns with the same settings on my amp but the one change in the chain re-inspired me. So I found 
that even those same patterns, those same chords, were, were reigniting and exciting me again, which kind of pushed me forward. And now, you know, and, and that's the wonderful thing, because then you say to yourself with the guitar box, guitar effects, you go, well, here's one effect, and that will reignite the excitement. Then if I put another effect in there, then the combination and the changes of what I'm doing, what each box is doing, and what my amp is doing, all of a sudden exponentially grow the potential for inspiration. And that's the key word here, inspiration, getting inspired by what you're doing. And that's why I want to talk about that today. Because as much as it's great to make use of what you have, your libraries, your plugins, your hardware, it is also very important to understand when you need to inject some inspiration. And that's why we all keep buying more pianos, we all keep buying more drums, we all keep buying more string libraries, because even the slightest change in the sound ignites that inspiration again. And that is why it's a great idea to buy new plugins or new instruments from time to time. Because all of a sudden it makes all that old stuff seem seem new again. It's like it's like when you uh, you know you're stuck at home in lockdown for instance, you know, we're all stuck at home uh, doing the same thing every day, not being able to do much else, and then you kind of go for a walk, you know, get a bit tired, get a bit cold, and you think, oh, kind of miss home. And then you go back home refreshed and renewed. So it's kind of like a call to action for you today. Uh, and that call to action is if you are finding yourself uninspired by what you're doing, think about what you can do to reignite that inspiration. So let's keep this simple. Say, for instance, you are a big fan of felt pianos, like myself. You sat down and you're writing felt piano, solo piano music, because we're keeping it simple. And yes, that stuff still gets landed on, still lands on trailers. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, I've had quite a few solo felt piano tracks on trailers. Uh, and you're thinking, okay, well, the same old sort of C minor, A flat major chord sequence just isn't doing it for me. So what do you do? You can do this. You can say to yourself, okay, perhaps I find another felt piano library. Maybe that will change it up. For me, like paying three pounds to get uh, Spitfire's then felt piano inspired me enough to write five albums in a few weeks because I'd never heard anything like it as a, from a library. I was like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Oh. And then I wrote like a madman. Um, and that's what you need to do. So you could find another library that does what, what it is that you would do, felt piano in this instance. Or you could then say, well, perhaps I buy an effect plugin to alter the sound somewhat. So if we're doing solo felt piano, um, without sort of going too far into the audio mangling world, we could always just say, well, perhaps I buy a new reverb. Or perhaps I buy an audio exciter or like one of those sort of snazzy plugins that that compresses and adds effects at the same time like drip or something like that uh, buy something like that that can uh, bring freshness to the old because at the end of the day as as you hear me say all the time we're all dealing with the same chord progressions the same melodies and usually the same sample libraries so if you can add points in the chain that give what you're doing a new identity, it is so good for your inspiration. And also, you know, I know, when you are inspired, you are driven. And when you are driven, you produce work. And when you produce work, it gets published. And when it gets published, it gets placements. So this element, this idea of being inspired 
and keeping inspiration flowing, because I talk about flow all the time. You know, we just heard last week my composed podcast. It's all, so much of that podcast is about creativity and flow. If you can keep inspiration flowing, and I'm not saying lit like a fire because inspiration flows like a tap through you all the time. You know, and it, uh, what I'm trying to say, I just want to kind of further that analogy more. It doesn't, the tap isn't above you, you are the tap. The inspiration is always flowing into you, it's just sometimes the tap, you, stop it flowing out into your work. And this little tip of using libraries and effects plugins to keep that tap open, sorry, for those Americans in the audience, faucet. Um, uh, I don't know whether they call it tap or faucet in any other parts of the world, but, you know, due to my uh, large exposure to American culture through TV, I understand that you say the word faucet over there. Um, anyway, side, side note. This will keep that tap open. Keep the inspiration flowing. Keep you producing work. And for those of you who've asked me this question, which have, I've had a lot, you know, how do I produce an album of 10 to 20 tracks in the same vein, in the same style, without feeling stagnated? This is one of those tricks that I would, would often recommend. You know, have five tracks at your standard setup and then bring in something new and fresh. Maybe a different piano, maybe a different effect plugin to reignite the composition process. To, I've said it, to flow, to let that flow happen more easily. And I plan myself. I, I mean, I just bought a plugin the other day. I haven't downloaded it yet, uh, but I'm very, very excited. And that's the thing. I'm really excited to have a play with it because. You know, as we do with our young children, they learn through play, and we need to keep that play through our work too. Play is so important because it keeps you open. You don't close when you're playing, unless you're, you know, one of those kids who's, you know, who uh, lays down the law. Uh, But we don't close when we play, we remain open. And that's the thing. Oh, what does this do? What does that do? What happens if I do this? I mean, what happens if I do that? And that's what's really, really important. And that openness keeps you flowing, keeps you excited, keeps you inspired. So, if you are finding yourself stagnating in some way with, with your process, think to yourself, is there anything I can add or change in my chain of creation, that's you, your tools, your output, and we're talking about your tools here, is there anything I can change or add into my toolkit that will inspire me more, inspire me again, revamp what I'm doing? And that is why we have all these plugins and libraries. Because even the slightest change, the slightest characteristic change, can make a huge change to what you are doing as a composer because remember your energy your excitement will go into your work and that excitement and energy will be picked up by who's listening to it (sighs) so establish what the problem is if there is a problem with your inspiration etc otherwise sit down and do the research go to the you know keep a tab of uh, all the library companies and all the um, plug-in companies and go and explore. Go onto YouTube, see once you've found a couple of plugins that look interesting, go onto YouTube, see what people are doing with them. Because that in itself is usually enough for me to be like, okay, I'm gonna buy that, that's awesome. And it doesn't have to be expensive guys. You can go and get the freebies, you know, uh Valhalla's super massive reverb is free at the moment, and that is oh Oh, I love it. You know, I'm such a massive fan of big reverbs. And me installing that, it wasn't that, actually that long ago, uh, but me installing that, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, this is immense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack out loads of tracks. Mm. Mostly ambient, but still. Uh, and that's what's really important. Go find some new toys, guys. 
don't spend a fortune you know be be critical with your with your purchases but I mean, if you want to spend a fortune you can I'm not gonna stop you but be critical with your purchases Actually, critical is not necessarily the right word I'm looking for be selective with your purchases maybe just buy one and have a play with that and see what happens just try to remember why we all got into into this so for me I remember that excitement of plugging in those boss stomp boxes and being and just being like my whole world has changed all of a sudden I can play that song from Nirvana you know find that fun through effects plugins and sample libraries thanks for listening guys you guys are absolute legends uh, as ever if you are interested in trailer music head on over to the trailer music school dot com where you can buy my courses join our community and generally immerse yourself in trailer music take care guys 